What's up, YouTube? On today's episode, we're in the RideTech R&D facility and we're gonna be talking with Randy Pope. Yeah. It's about all the suspension products. We're about to put on his Randit Trans Am. So Randy, we're sitting here looking at all of this hardware. What are you thinking, man? Well, one, my pulse is racing. I get excited about suspension and especially about it going on my Firebird project car. The quality that I see in these products, I mean, they're strong, they're beefy, three-way adjustable shocks. I know enough about suspension to know this is going to transform the handling on my Firebird. I'm looking forward to seeing the fruits of our labor as well. Well, let's get it right on the Trans Am right now. Awesome, let's do it, man. Oh, Randy, one more thing. I love the Smokey and the Bandit shirt, but uh, we're gonna need uh, something a little more... Much better. Oh, smooth. <laughs> Randy, so yesterday, um, you were talking about how you had a lot of, like, right steering input variants versus left. Tell me what was going on there. The car wants to go right. It's a combination of pulling and steering response. It made it really hard to be precise. Turning right, I'd get more than I asked for. Going left, I got less than I asked for. And so we're looking at things in the alignment here as delivered that might cause such a thing. And there's a little bit. The, the caster's a little bit different. This is not much, 5.7 to 6.0, not much. We've got a little more camber on the left front than we do on the right front, about a half a degree almost. And those things could cause that. But the funny thing is, one pulls it one way and one pulls it the yeah, other way. It's not maybe. uniform, yeah. Uh, but this could be better, the alignment can be better. And another thing we did was we measured the ride heights of the chassis. And the left front is really low. And so it, once we level that out, that also I think is gonna make a really big difference in steering response, at least left to right. Yeah, well, we're gonna corner weight this thing. We're gonna align this thing after we put all this suspension on, um, but this was just to get a check and see if that would explain anything that was going on with the steering feel. Nothing too egregious. And uh, at this point, we're gonna, we're gonna blow the front suspension off and put all the new stuff on and get to it. We've got all the front suspension ripped off the car for the most part. And uh, before we throw all this new stuff on, we just want to talk a little bit about it. Starting here at the front, we've got a big, thick, uh, what we call our muscle bar. It's a sway bar for the front. That's nice. a 425 pound rate sway bar. A lot, a lot bigger rate than the factory bar. Really thick end links here, billet frame mounts for that. That is a beautiful piece. It's super light too. I mean, wow, actually. Doesn't look like. On the front arms here, um, they've moved the ball joint back for improved caster. Um, that corresponds with the ball joint on the lower being moved forward. It allows that wheelbase to stay the same, but yeah. you have correct suspension geometry. Yeah. We're using Delrin bushings with Teflon as well, so you don't have to worry about lubricating those. Um, we've lowered the, the lower shock mount as well, so you, you've got more travel, uh, which is always nice to have. And the lower mounts are also double shear for added strength. Um, high quality ball joints in the uppers and lowers. And then um, talking about the shock package, typically these kits come with our HQ single adjustable, the rebound adjustable only. That's great. Um, but considering what you're gonna use this car for, um, we've upgraded yours to, to the three-way adjustable. So these have high speed and low speed compression adjustable. And then we've got the single rebound as well on the bottom. I'm gonna play with that a lot, just to see what happens. The shocks are tricky. You don't always know what you're gonna get. Well, one of the things that I'm looking forward to is being able to show everybody watching, you know, we, we explain everything in the instructions, but being able to kind of have the instructions leap off the page into us setting up your car is really going to help drive things home. So what do you say we get started tossing this stuff on? Let's get it on the Randit. All right. <laughs> Man.
All right, Randy. Well, we've reached the halfway point. Uh, the guys just got done installing the sway bar. Uh, we've got that connected to the lower A arms. And speaking of the front of the suspension, we've got we've got all of this done. Three ways are all hooked up. Canisters are installed up in the inner fender wells. Yeah. What do you think? And I'm thrilled. The uh, car seemed way too soft in the front, and I'm expecting just by looking at the size of the dampers and the triple adjustment options on it to really tighten up the front end of this car. And I'm expecting that's going to improve steering response a lot and actually improve the ride because on the road, the car had a tendency to have this kind of float. Well, based on what you told us you wanted to use the car for, uh, we put a good digressive valve package in these three-way coilovers. We stiffened up the spring rate as well, so I think these are around an 800-pound spring, so that ought to be pretty firm for you. So we'll go ahead and throw the wheels and tires on the front. We'll flip this guy around, and uh, I'll show you what we're going to put on the back. Well, Randy, we've graduated to the to the rear of the car. Uh, we're about to, to rip the leaf springs out of this car, and you're going to be getting a nifty new four link in the back. So this is the latest and greatest of our of our second gen F body kits that we've got here. We've revised this design over time, and uh, this is probably somewhere around 70 or so pounds lighter than the than the iteration that we had a while back. Well, the interesting thing here, we've got like a little turnbuckle here at the top and the bottom. And that's something that we were talking to our engineers earlier this morning, and, and they were talking about how there's like three quarters of an inch of difference in between the frame rails, depending wow. on, and, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. So we had to include from these in every one, from next. one car to the next. It didn't seem like there was any reason why that was a model. Um, the day they were made, I, it, it doesn't really make much sense GM to us. Yeah, and, and so that, that's why that's that's included in there. So bolted to these, and, and these tabs will weld to the axle, of course, but we've got uh, tubular adjustment arms, um, and then we've got our joints at each end. One's reverse thread, so you don't have to take them off to, to adjust them. You, they can be adjusted on the car, Beautiful. which is nice, convenient. Beautiful. We've got the optional sway bar. This doesn't come in the kit. It's an optional add-on, so you can adjust it to a, to a higher limit or, or the lower limit. Fine tuning. And then uh, these are your longer arms here with your lower shock mounts. Amazing. On, on billet. Yes. Billet and more mounts. adjustment. More adjustment there. Just to yep. uh, change the amount of anti squat. Anti squat. Yep. So we can adjust the forward bite. I mean, this stuff just it excites me. Stuff. Again, the pulse starts going. I'm, that's like real race car stuff. And then last but not least, uh, we've got three ways here in the back too. Um, yeah. We did 800 pound spring rate in the, fir in the front and these are 225s in the rear. Okay. That's up from 175 is what you were at in the rear okay. on these Leafs. You were, I think at 600 in the front with, yeah. uh, with what you had all originally. Right. So, Sporty. so we'll get on that here in the next few minutes after we get all this torn off. It's fantastic. All right, Randy, well, we've reached another checkpoint here. Uh, Josh and Dylan have been awesome working on installing the bracketry with the jig. Now that we've got this thing painted, uh, these things are ready to go back up under the car. It'll locate with the four links. These are your upper links, yeah. those are your lower links. The cradle itself uses uh, riv nuts or nut certs to install up under the car. Pretty substantial. It's bolted in multiple locations. Um, there are some brackets that you have to trim off of the car to make room for it. Um, but overall, it's a super structurally sound piece um, that's going to help locate this thing and keep it from moving left to right uh, like we saw it doing a couple days ago. Yeah, it's too bad it's hidden because it is a beautiful piece. But so are these. Yeah, and we're absolutely. We're going to see this working, and this is going to be, well, I think it goes this way. Yep. It's going to be very much a part of the geometry that is part of the secret to a, a, the advantage of a four link over a simple leaf spring, just a cart spring. Those leaf springs were the only thing holding the axle in place. Yeah. And they're just not very good at it compared to this. I mean, this is right. And it's even adjustable. You know, we got, I can change the car's characteristic if I want to. Yep, absolutely. With everything now installed on the Randit, stick around for our next episode where we talk about setting up your car's suspension for different styles of driving and getting the most out of an adjustable coilover performance suspension. 